My Seven Chakras, episode 202. Today is a lucky day. Something awesome will happen. The Seven Chakras, swirling vortices of energy, positioned throughout our body from the base of the spine to the crown of the head. For thousands of years, this ancient wisdom has been passed on from master to disciple. What are the functions of these energy centers? And could these chakras help you unlock your destiny and find your true purpose? Welcome to My 7 Chakras. And now, your host, Aditya Jai Kumar. What's up, Action Tribe? AJ here, founder and host of My 7 Chakras, the show where we dive deep into the ancient world to uncover nuggets of wisdom that will help you find your life's purpose. So if you have a burning question about life and you're looking for an answer, then take a deep breath because you are listening to the right show. But before we go into all that good stuff, let's listen to today's iTunes review written by one of our listeners named Maverick Jeanette, who writes, Can't believe I didn't find this sooner. This is truly a great podcast with a wealth of information presented in such an approachable and understandable manner. I appreciate the work and dedication Aditya puts into this. I also want to point out how attentive he is to the guests. I like the feeling that you genuinely care about your content. Makes it worth listening to much more. I find myself getting into phases of self-doubt and inaction. It's too frequent and I want to do more with my life. This podcast helps my mind space immensely along with trying out tips discussed in each show. All I have is praise for the show. I'm happy to be a new Action Tribe member. So Jeanette, welcome to the Action Tribe. It's so great to have you here. Action Tribe, if you've never ever written an iTunes review before, it's super simple. Just look at your iPhone, hit review, and then hit write a review. And if you want to email me your thoughts and experiences instead, you can do so by sending me an email to aj at my 7 That's aj at my 7 You see, I put a lot of thought and hard work and time into each and every episode. So when I get a review or a message, it really makes my day. And now, for our featured guest for today, let's bring him on, Sean Anderson. So Sean, are you ready to inspire? AJ, man, let's give the best show that you and I ever had. What do you think about that? Awesome. I'm all in. Sean Anderson is a six-time motivational author, international keynote speaker, and a results-producing people builder. His go-the-extra-mile philosophy and ability to produce winning results have been praised by political leaders, Olympic gold medal, and world record holders, and media outlets around the world. An entrepreneur since the age of 10, when he started a business selling worms to fishermen, Sean has continued by building businesses and organizing events that make a difference in how people think. Sean is the founder of Extra Mile America and the creator of the Extra Mile Day in the US, a day recognizing the capacity we have to create positive changes in our families, our organizations, our communities, and ourselves when we go the extra mile. On November 1st, 2016, 560 cities made uh, the unique declaration and recognized a superstar volunteer heroes in their communities. So, Sean, thank you so much for joining us today. It's so great to have you on. It's a privilege to be on your show, and I appreciate your energy and your enthusiasm. And I want to give a special shout out to uh, Jeanette, who had written into you because she is what I call a battery charger of the human spirit, who takes the time to not only think something, but to let someone know what it meant to you. And I'm really grateful for people like Jeanette in this world. Wonderful. I love the energy with which we have started. So the first question that I normally ask all our guests is to share an inspirational quote. So Sean, what is your favorite inspirational quote and how does that apply to your life? Well, I'm going to switch it up with you just a little bit here. I'm not going to give you my favorite inspirational quote, but I am going to give you my daily favorite affirmation because it's my affirmation that really affects my life instead of looking for a quote that I might live by. My affirmation today is a lucky day, something awesome will happen. It's because that simple affirmation starting early in the day sets the tone for everything else that happens in my day. Man, if you look for awesome, you're going to find awesome. If you look for sadness, you'll find it. If you look for happiness, you'll find it. So every day is going to be a lucky day. I'm looking for luck. Wonderful. Love that affirmation. Action Tribe, no matter where you are, whether you are in your car or in the train or if you're relaxing at home or maybe if you're preparing for your long day ahead, just say to yourself by looking at yourself, 
yourself in the mirror and say that today is a lucky day. Something awesome will happen because it's true. As we learn each and every day, whatever you are looking for is also looking for you as well. So thanks a lot for sharing that wonderful affirmation with us. And with that, let's dive in. So Sean, uh, you say that as a matter of finding my simple and sharpening myself, I trek across countries, right? So what is the meaning of finding my simple? Ah, well, first off, just to give your listeners kind of an understanding, I've, I've had the great opportunity to, to create adventures in about 40 countries in the world, including having walked across three of them. I walked 550 miles across Spain uh, from St. Jean, France to Finisterre. I've walked the entire coast of Portugal from the bottom up to the top. And last summer, I walked 750 miles around Shikoku, Japan. In June of this year, I'm going to be walking border to border across the country of England. And then I'm going to be walking across Ireland immediately after. after. I've also pedaled a bike across the United States twice. So, With that in mind, when I say finding my simple, it means that I am living with nothing more than a backpack on my back. I take away all the technology and everything in life that connects us to all those noises and chaos that we hear, and I go find my simple. I find the most pure part of me, my passion, my purpose. I guarantee you the first few days of that are really hard, and I'm going, what the am I doing out here? But after that, all that melts away. It's like that spiritual fat just melts away. You come back to your core. And when you're finished with an adventure like this, where you've had to just, you know, to trust yourself physically, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually, you find who you are. You find your deepest passion. You reinvigorate your deepest purpose, and you come back the best version of yourself. Beautiful. So, Sean, in fact, these days, one of my focuses is to take out and remove clutter in my home, which I'm not using, especially if I've not used for more than six months, it's out of my home. But you are making things so simple that you're living with nothing but your backpack, which really means that you've taken out all that additional clutter clutter, those electronics, those gadgets, or maybe the technology that no longer serve you and you're living your simple. But I want to go back to the very start, right? So how does, did, did all of this start? Because you're also known as the extra mile man. So what's the story behind that? Well, the story of the extra mile man really started happening in 2009. Okay. That's when I created the extra mile America tour. And at that time, America and the rest of the world was experiencing so much chaos and we did not, we had so much uncertainty in the US. Businesses were closing, even banks were closing. Foreclosures were at an all time high. Divorce rate was up. And people started losing their confidence on being able to affect their own future. They were so uncertain about what was going to happen. They started looking at their boss saying, What are you going to do to make sure that I keep my job and continue to make money? They looked at the government and said, What are you going to do to create a program to help us survive? They would look at their spouse and they say, what are you going to do to make our relationship better? So I wanted to use my very small voice and create something to remind people that if you want to create ultimate change in your life. You quit looking at the government and your boss and your best friend and your wife, but you look at the man and the woman in the mirror. And if you want to create change, you don't continue to do the same thing over and over, but instead you have to do more, be more, give more, or go the extra mile. So in a Forrest Gump sort of way, I pedaled a bicycle from one ocean of the United States to the other 4,000 miles as a symbol of actually what it means to go the extra mile. I was a non-bicyclist at that time. And along the way, my staff created events in 21 American cities where we had pre-recognized over 200 people who had been identified as having gone the extra mile in life in either volunteerism or service or in making their dreams come true. That's amazing. So you started at a very pivotal moment uh, in America, a time when, like you mentioned, there was a lot of crisis, chaos and uncertainty. And overall, the energy of the communities or the cities were sort of uh, getting weaker, right? Because people started losing their confidence and uh, their level of certainty in their life. And they started looking outwards, asking people and, you know, the, the communities around them what they could do for the individual. So you notice that sense of shift in energy and you want to do something uh, for them so that they can start looking within and 
starting that transformation. And you, like the movie Forrest Gump, started bicycling across the United States. Is that correct? Yes. I don't want you to think I just got on a bike one, one day. Yeah. It, was, okay. it, was, it was about six or eight months of planning because, again, we had to identify these people. And at the end of the tour, I also gave away $10,000 to the stories that were most inspiring. From there, that's where Extra Mile Day was created, where we worked with the mayors of the cities to recognize those who were awesome in their community. I was elated the very first year, 2009, on November 1st. There were 23 cities. And then last year, as you had said earlier, there were 560. So sometimes when you take just a small vision and you continue to apply massive action to a small vision, the vision gets bigger and so do the results. This is a perfect example of that. Got it. So I love that you spoke about the concept of vision. Uh, My question to you is, in your experience, what holds us back from really achieving what we set forth in our dreams or in our vision? Massive action. You know, it's one thing to have intention. It's one thing to have a goal. It's one thing to have a dream or a wish. But if you don't follow that up with massive action to make it come through, that's all it's ever going to be is a dream, a wish, or an intention. Got it. So massive action, like Tony Robbins says, you got to start taking action. But I want to talk about something that acts as an obstacle on that path to massive action. We're talking about the concept of self-limiting beliefs. I'm sure that you've had your share of them as well and that you've taken measures to overcome them. Uh, Could you share with us what were some of the limiting beliefs that you had on your journey early on and how did you work on them? Well, I think that any time that you have a big goal in life or a big dream, if it's big enough, you've got to expect that you're going to have 10, you know, 10 times that there's going to be obstacles in your road that you have to earn your extra mile stripes and prove that you want it bad enough to get around it. Uh, when I first started the Extra Mile Tour, when I was pedaling across uh, the country by myself, I had a support van, a vehicle with a road manager, one person that would drive a van that carried an extra bike in case things broke down, that carried all of our meeting stuff for the cities and things like that, and the, the road manager would follow me. Well, the road manager that I had hired ended up quitting on day two of the Extra Mile Day Tour, and the Extra Mile Day Tour was intended uh, to, to be a, a, you know, a month and a half long across the country. So all of a sudden, in the middle of the night, I'm in Oakland, California. And if anybody knows their geography, we had just started in San Francisco the day before. I still have 4,000 miles to pedal. My road manager calls me up and says, I'm going home. I'm quitting. So at that point, at that, the next morning, I still had to pedal to Sacramento, California. I had an event with the mayor in two days. I had no road manager to drive my van. And at that point, all these whispers in back in my head started to come through and say, you know, you shouldn't have done this to begin with. I started calling all the people at midnight night that had been supportive of the tour and say, hey, this is what happened. What do you think? And they said, Sean, it's a sign. It's a sign you should quit. And so, you know, at that point, that was a super challenge for me. I, of course, am not a person who quits. I ended up trying to piece together a couple of drivers to get to to where I needed to be and took it one day at a time. Because sometimes when our goals are so big, we can't cross the finish line all at once, but we can make it to the next mile. Got it. So I love the phrase that you shared with us. You have to earn your extra mile stripes by overcoming your challenge. Action Tribe, you have to earn it. And the only way you earn it is by overcoming, accepting that challenge and coming out with flying colors. So you mentioned that you had a support van, which would support you during for, you know, for the stuff you needed for the meetings on, on, on the journey. Uh, you had that extra bike uh, just in case something happened to your current bike. And the person who was going to support you, the support guy, ended up quitting just on the day off. Uh, you had 4,000 miles to pedal. Is that correct? Right. They, they, yeah, they, they gave me a call in the hotel at 12 o'clock that night and just said, I'm not, you know, we're supposed to be up at 7 o'clock in the morning pedaling again. And mm-hmm. the person said, I quit. Wow. So you had so much more to do. And then the voices in your head started to speak to you. And the people as well said that it's a sign that you have to quit. And something that comes to my mind right now is when you're doing such an amazing revolution, when you're trying to change the country, literally, it's not a self-effort, right? You're, you're depending on so many people around you, so many support staff, maybe people who are supporting your uh, vision. As a leader, how do you go about uh, inspiring people to be on your side When the moment gets hard, you know, when it becomes difficult, when people start to doubt themselves, what is your go to approach? Well, I I, I believe that I try to surround myself with people who share the same vision. It, It has nothing about me being inspiring or motivating. It has to do with the vision that we all chase together. Because if we're tied to a purpose, if we're tied to putting a man on the moon, that in and of itself can drive all of us together despite one person being inspiring or not inspiring. Got it. 
it got it so uh since you spoke about purpose many of our listeners listening to the show right now are on the quest of finding their life's purpose maybe it's not going on the moon but we each have our own uh quest to find something that's meaningful to do and the purpose for which we are, we are here on this earth so how does a person go about finding their life's calling or purpose in your opinion i think the first thing is you you feel what makes your your face smile and what makes your heart smile because when you find those two things, that's what you found that you're passionate about. And then when you start to marry passion with purpose, that's where you're going to make your greatest contribution. Finding one's purpose doesn't need, mean that we need to make money from doing that certain thing. Okay. It, because you know money just might be a vehicle that allows us the freedom to, to have time to work on what our purpose might be. Our purpose might be in volunteerism or service and something that we're, that we're really passionate about. So, so don't think that you have to have a career that's your purpose. Just think that you, you're trying to find something for your life that's your purpose. What is your contribution? What do you care about? What does your heart say that you love? Love that. I love the fact that you said that money is a vehicle that allows us the time to do what we want. Is that correct? That's absolutely right. Wow. You know, I'm not, a, I'm not a big believer that, that, I mean, sure, money can be some people's goal, but I just think that that's a, that's, that ends up being a goal that just that's that's not positive passion i think in the end my life is going to be measured not by how many dollars i have in the bank but my life is going to be measured by how many people i was able to help push forward a little bit and i think that if i go to those last moments of my life and i live by how i'm going to feel at that time that mm. helps direct my steps now got it got it now let's focus on your journey uh, the treks that you've had, uh, I'm sure with any adventure, there's a lot of uncertainty right, during the travel. And that's why one of the reasons why they call it an adventure. And you've shared the first crisis that, that you faced, or the first challenge that you faced uh, on day one. But did you ever face any other problems along the road? Oh, absolutely. I remember when I was pedaling across the, the country that on that yeah. same tour that we talked about, and it was a super rainy day, and I can see this clearly, and I'm coming down, and I can't, the road is really, really wet. And it, it happened to be one of those roads where there wasn't a bike lane for me to go on. So I was just on like the shoulder of the main road and it was okay. somewhat of a freeway. The cars were moving about 55, 60 miles an hour. And I'm on this shoulder and it's wet and the rain's pouring down on me and there's a huge pothole. In the, wow. in the road, and it, it, it's about a foot deep right on the side of where I'm supposed to go through. And I know that if I hit that sucker, man, I am going to go over my bike. So I, I veer to the left. Well, there's a little bit of a shoulder difference between the highway and the bike lane that I'm in. And so when I veered to the left, my tire hit the slippery road bad, and I went tumbling, crashing into the freeway. And as I'm laying there bleeding in the road, these cars are coming at me, and I just open my eyes, and I... I see that this car just dodges me by a mere foot wow. and then somehow I'm able to get back up on that, uh, take my bike, which is so broken and busted now, and I get myself off the freeway and, and I just collapse on the side of the road. At that point, I knew that even though I was bloodied and everywhere and I needed to go to the, the, the doctor, I needed to get my other bike and I needed to finish the ride that day because when we fall down in life, if we don't get back up immediately, that, that fear becomes so strong that we might not ever be able to get back up again. So your first step was to deal with that fear. And get back on your bike, right? And get back on that. Uh, yeah, because I realized I still had, you know, a couple thousand miles to go and I've got to keep wow. pedaling the bike. And I was scared. I was scared to get back on because I just, I crashed. I almost got hit by this car. I'm bleeding. My chin's bleeding. My elbows, my everything's bleeding. And I'm in shock. I know right then the instinct, that self-awareness is, Sean, you've got to be patient. You've only got like four miles to get to that emergency center. You can pedal that yourself. Do it. Get on your bike now. You need to do it. And I did. It was four miles, huh? To get to that, yeah, we had identified where that net, that nearest emergency center was, and that's where we headed. Got it. Now, uh, Tony Robbins says that when you're on your deathbed, just before you're about to die, you're not going to remember everything that happened in your life. You're going to remember the magic moments that you've had throughout your life, the memorable moments that stick in your mind and sort of flash by you. So my question to you is, on your treks, on your different journeys that you've had in different countries, what has been the most beautiful view or a magic moment that you've had in these different countries? You know, there's no doubt I've seen a lot of pretty amazing things, people and sites. But I think what I'm going to remember most is that 
you know, for example, the first day I'm walking over the Pyrenees Mountains from St. Jean, France into Spain, and I didn't, I didn't at that time know how fast I could really go, and I was just going gangbusters that first day. I was doing over 20 miles, and my feet became so bruised and hurt that a couple days later, I could barely walk, and my toenails were off, and they were bleeding, and, you know, at, at, that, at that point, um, it, you know, it just seemed like, I, I probably shouldn't continue. So when you ask me what I'm going to remember, I'm going to remember that every time that something hit me in life that I chose not to quit, but I chose to to find the best part of me and to, and to keep walking despite whatever I was going through because no matter what, the feet will heal. You will get stronger. You will make it through the rainstorm. And if you just keep going, you've got a better chance of getting to the finish line than if you never keep walking at all. Wonderful. I think that's a really powerful message. Action Tribe, no matter where you are in life right now, whether you're going uphill whether your your feet are bleeding metaphorically or if you're really, really challenged and you feel that the world is crumbling around you, things will get better. You just got to have faith and keep taking action and going that extra mile as we're learning today. So, Sean, we've spoken about a crisis situation. We've spoken about a magical moment. Could you talk to us about an unexpected experience that you've had on your journeys? It doesn't have to be a bad experience, but an unexpe- unexpected experience. Anything that stands out? You know, I, I really look for the adventures of my life. Every single day, I think that we have a chance to, if we look for adventures, if we look for new happenings, every day is amazing. And every day is as unique as the numbers that represent it. And mm. and I think that, you know, I can't, I can't pinpoint for you at this point and adventure because there are so many every single day. I can assure you that I'm about to have an amazing adventure today because when we live seeking adventures, they happen. When we live to seek awesome, amazing, inspiring people and moments and experiences, they happen. Our life becomes what we seek. Got it. So, yeah, I, you know, I noted that you said every day is unique as the numbers that represent it. And I'm going to speak about a number over here that is 560, right? Getting to 560 cities to declare November 1st as extra mile day is no easy task. And I'm sure there was a lot of planning, a lot of hard work and dedication that went into it. So how did you go about doing that? What's the story behind that? Well, again, the first year we did it was November 1, 2009. And November okay. 1 has become the, that, that mark every single year. It just keeps growing. You know, when you have a positive message, when, you know, people are hungry for positive. And when you're taking a moment to recognize other people and clap and encourage other people who are doing great things, mayors, they want to be associated with that. People want to be associated with that. So that's how it's grown. When you tie yourself to the positive, people will come. I remember reading one time this this preacher. They, they said, you know, gosh, how do all these thousands of people keep coming and listening to you? It's amazing. What is it? And the preacher said, when you set yourself on fire, people will come. Same thing in our life. When we live with passion, people will come to us. Mm-hmm. Now, you you spoke about the beauty of the human spirit, right? Because the preacher said, when you set yourself on fire, the people will come, right? When people are amazed by the magnificence, the beauty of that which you represent and the passion that you have and the vision that you're pursuing. So, I want to speak about that for a moment. During your journey, I'm sure you've met some incredibly inspiring people. But till date, who has been the most inspiring extra milers that you met on your journey and why? Well, I remember I was in the state of Iowa and I was introduced to this woman after I had spoken and she had to be escorted up to me on somebody's arm. Mm. And the reason that she had to be escorted to me was because she had two glass eyes. But it wasn't always like that for Sheila Holdsworth. This woman in her her 40s at that time, when she was 10 years old, she could see AJ just as well as you and I could see. But she was wearing an orthodontic headgear to straighten her teeth. And at age 10, one day, that orthodontic headgear, it snapped. And when it snapped, it gouged out both of her eyes. So from the age of 10 to the moment I had met her, she had had two glass eyes. Now, the reason this woman is inspiring is because she chose never to live as a blind person. She chose to live as vibrantly and actively as she could. She became an international record holder in downhill skiing. She became a trick water ski jumper. She rode a bicycle tandem across her state. She chose to do things, not letting the limitations hold her back. People like Sheila Holsworth are people who inspire me, people that remind me of whatever limitations we have. The limitations only stop us when we let them stop us. So Action Tribe, as we're learning today, you have the choice to decide how you react to the situations 
and the challenges that manifest in your life. And the moment you realize that the only thing that is stopping you from getting to where you want to get is your belief of whether or not it's possible, the moment you realize that, that's when life shifts as we're learning. So, Sean, you've been a lifetime entrepreneur, right? You, your first biz was selling worms to fishermen at the tender age of 10. So how has entrepreneurship impacted your life? I believe and I learned at a very young age that if you have a dream and you apply the action, you can make the vision happen. So at that time, a 10-year-old boy was pretty fascinated with trying to collect every baseball card in a series. And he knew that the vehicle to collect baseball cards was he had to make money. And and the way that I thought I could make the most money to buy the most baseball cards was to flood my parents' backyard at nighttime and then set up a system where the worms would pop up on the ground. I'd go pick up the worms. I'd put them in uh, peat barrel uh, uh, buckets. I'd run an ad in the uh, paper for fishermen, and then I'd sit in my front yard, and on Saturdays and Sunday mornings, I would sell worms by the dozen to the fishermen. So I learned that if I did that, the more worms I got, the more baseball cards I was able to, to get. And so that simple thing of, man, if you dream something, and then if you just take the action and the steps to do it, chances are you can turn that dream into more than just a goal, but you can turn it into the reality of your existence. Love that. And as you shared, the baseball cards was your motivating force or drive to get you to take action. Is that correct? Yes. You weren't doing it for the money itself. You were doing it so that the money that you get would help you get the baseball cards. So Action Tribe, think about what is your version of baseball card that you really want to achieve? What is that one thing that, as we're learning today, makes your heart glow, makes you want to do more in your life, makes you wake up and live life as if every day is a new adventure? Find your baseball card. So, Sean, for someone listening to the show right now, is there an extra mile challenge or action step that you'd like to recommend for our listeners? Well, what I would say is definitely if, if a person wants to live their most adventurous, romantic thrilling, inspiring, creative, amazing life. They just have to keep that certain, that one single idea in their mind, keep going the extra mile. How do I go the extra mile? How do I give more? How do I be more? Because it's when we become more, our results become more. Action Tribe, to access the show notes for today's episode, visit my 7 chakrascom forward slash 202. That's my 7 chakrascom forward slash 202. You are given this life because you're strong enough to live it. This is a powerful quote shared by a member of our Facebook group, Josephine Daniels. Action Tribe, think about it. You are a being of light that has consciously decided to manifest on this physical plane that we call Earth, all the way from the non-physical universe. You've come a long way. You face challenges, you've gone through struggles, and you've gone through a lot of pain. Now is the time to make all of it worth it. Otherwise, what's the use of the courage and energy that you've exhibited so far? Remember that you have all the strength, you have all the dedication, and even when it seems like the whole world is crumbling around you, I am so sure that you can do it. Because there is nothing as powerful as the human spirit. And as Josephine reminded us, you are strong enough to live this life. So, Sean, talk to us about a time when you faced a challenge, a massive challenge, a difficult situation. Uh, how did you get into it? And then what steps did you take to overcome it? I know that you've cha- you shared one challenge uh, 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 before this, but uh, if something else comes to your mind, that would be awesome. Well, I had created a concept called SOAR, uh, seeing the dream, organizing into a step-by-step plan, A, taking action, R, rejecting failure. The SOAR principle had ended up changing my life after I had graduated from Berkeley, and I wanted to share that into a book. So the, this, this book that I had in my mind was called SOAR to the Top, but I knew that I wasn't uh, at that point. I, people didn't know who I was enough to get that book published, and so I needed to write a a a another book uh, before that book that I might have had more experience. And so I had done well in college, and so I wrote a book on countdown to college, helping your students succeed in the universe. Well, to get that book published, I had eighty three rejection letters from publishers, not one, not ten, not twenty, but eighty three. And so in the back of my mind, I knew that that was my vehicle to getting the book I really wanted published, sort of the top. But I had to have 
have patience with that very first book and go through my 83 rejection letters. It ended up paying off that first book, maybe sold around 5,000 copies. But the second book soared to the top. I was rejected by the first publisher, but both the second and the third publisher uh, agreed to take it. And at that time, I got to negotiate my royalties. So sometimes if your dream is big, man, it doesn't matter if someone says no. You, If you believe, the only no that really matters is the one that comes out of your own heart and your own mouth. Got it. So as you look back at your life, in just one sentence, what is that one major life lesson that you'd like to share with our listeners listening right now? I'm grateful. I'm grateful. And I'm telling you why I'm grateful. I'm grateful for every bad experience that's ever happened to me because I turned that bad experience into something that was powerful and meaningful. If you like who you are, then you have to be grateful for everything bad that's happened to you in your life because because it's helped form you and shape you to become uh, you know, sensitive, communicative, reflective, whatever it might be. I embrace every tragedy, defeat, failure, loss I've ever had. I am so grateful for it. And when when it happens to me now, I still can say I'm thankful that this happened because it makes me more passionate, more purposeful. And I know that eventually in the long run, if you have that kind of awareness, that in the long run, you, the gratitude will definitely shine its way into your life 10 times. Well, thanks a lot for sharing. And uh, I think your story is really, really inspiring that you shared with us a while back. You shared that you had created the SOAR principle and you wanted to share it with the world by writing a book. But then you realized that you had an obstacle in front of you that uh, you know people didn't really know who you were because you didn't have a book prior to that to establish yourself. And so in order to get that traction, in order to help lay the foundation for your uh, book based on the SOAR principle, you, you decided to write that first book uh, during which you got 83 rejection letters, which is a huge amount of challenges for so many authors, right? But then you didn't give up. <laughs> you know, if you had given up at your 52nd rejection and you would not have, you know, come where you are today and you would not have written that book. You wrote the first book, which had some success, but more importantly, it acted as a foundation, uh, the platform upon which you could stand and then write the other book, you know, which you had dreamed about and which you had visualized uh, so much. So I think that's a that's an amazing takeaway for so many of our listeners that the first attempt that you take, even though it might, might not be that successful, all of your actions form the foundation for your ultimate victory, which is waiting for you. So thanks a lot for sharing, Sean. I, I believe, AJ, that sometimes if we keep hitting the target 100% of the time, the target's just too close in our life. So if you want if you want to find the best version of yourself, you can't set goals that are so guaranteed to be hit. You've got to, you've got to push yourself. You've got to step outside your comfort zone and push goals that are out there. And when goals are out there, you have to assume you're going to miss the mark. But then you recalculate and you recalculate and then, and then you, you will hit the X. Wonderful. So Action Tribe, as we're learning today, don't be afraid of being your true self and just shooting the goal. And as you head out in your life to take action and to transform your life, take some time to think about what you believe is your weakness right now. Take a long, hard pause to think about it. What is your weakness? Maybe what are your flaws? What are your limitations in your life? Or maybe some of the scars that you have. Don't hide them. Instead, flaunt them for the world to see. I don't know about you, but in my case, the more I express my vulnerability, the more I express my weaknesses or maybe share my flaws, the more people like me and the more they connect with me. And I think the reason for that is when you lower your guards and express your vulnerability, you sort of give permission to others to do so as well. In other words, you make those around you more comfortable in their own skin. You create an environment of sharing and of growth so that everyone can take action. Everyone can shoot their own versions of targets. And when that happens, it's amazing. Because as shared by our own uh, Facebook group member, Amanda John, what you believe to be your greatest weakness will lead you to your ultimate true strength. So Sean, as on today, what is your life's calling? Well, I've had a mission statement for a long time in my life, and that's to empower one million people to lead a more positive and purposeful existence. So when you have a mission statement in your life, it helps it helps make decisions big and small a lot easier. So if something, a new project, a new idea, or something's coming in my direction, I always match it up with my mission statement, and I ask, how does this help me reach this goal? Again, to empower one million people to lead a more positive and purposeful existence. Well, thanks a lot for sharing that. Now, as you look back at your revolution, the number of events that you've had and the treks that you've done, was there ever a defining moment that really changed things for you? 
There really was. I, I remember when I went to college and I went to a school called the University of California at Berkeley. And the very first, I had been a student body president in high school, but the very first day I walked on that campus at Berkeley, 40,000 students, I said, someday I'm going to run for president of the school. I said that on day one. When it became my senior year and there came a chance to do it, of course there was massive fear. And, uh, but, but I knew right then that I had to be sincere to my own dreams, sincere to what I whispered to myself. Because when you start to lie to yourself, how could you ever count on yourself? So the thing that pushed me over the top that I grew the greatest faith and belief and confidence in myself is, is I did run. I didn't win. That was not what was important. I honored what I said I was going to do to myself, and I ran for that office. So sometimes when you tell yourself that you're going to do things, man, make that, make that a binding agreement in concrete. Follow through. Don't just give lip service to your life, but put massive legs under it and make your dreams actually run. Trust yourself. Believe in yourself. So there you actually try to be true to yourself. Follow your dreams and take action. If you said you will do it sometime in the past, because when you complete it, irrespective of whether you succeed or no, you're sort of pushing that energy forward. You're engaging in the flow. And that's great for your mental, physical, and spiritual health as well. And with that, we've arrived at the very last round for today, which is called the Wisdom Round. The Wisdom Round, as many of our listeners know, is a round which comprises of four questions. It's sort of like a rapid-fire round where our listeners can take note and take action. So, Sean, what is the best advice that someone has ever given you? It, it wasn't the advice of a person I ever met. It was the advice of a person who am I read for read in a book because the two things that have changed my life first off more than anything, AJ, are the books that I've read and the people that I've met. This, this person was Winston Churchill, and Winston Churchill said, never, never, never give up. Got it. So name a personal habit that keeps you strong. I focus on health every single day. I focus on health of body, mind, and spirit. Every single day, that becomes my most important goal. So what is your morning routine like? What do you do during the first two hours of your day? I have what I call a morning meeting. The first thing that I do is I do uh, some meditation and I manifest what's going to happen to me in that day. I read an affirmation, so I start putting nothing but positive into my head. I work on my journal because I believe that the life that's worth living is always worth recording. I ask myself three morning questions. What am I excited about today? Who can I serve today? What am I grateful for today? And then I go out and I start my day by getting my blood pumping and I do a little exercise. That's my first two hours every single day. Got it. And since you believe that books can change a person's life, could you recommend as a book that you'd like for our listeners to read? I'd like to recommend two of them. The two books that have made the most difference in my life was one, the autobiography of Benjamin Franklin, because it, it, that book showed me the importance of accountability and, and how we can create change when we focus on a certain area. Again, the autobiography of Benjamin Franklin. And the second book is a book by a gentleman named Og, O.G. Mandino. It was called The Greatest Miracle in the World. Those are the two most important books I've ever read. Awesome. We'll have these books up in the show notes as links. Uh, Sean, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for sharing with us your stories, uh, the challenges that you've had, and also the approach that you used to transform your life. Before you go, tell us something that you're grateful for and tell us how we can find you online. I'm grateful that there are awesome people in this world like you, AJ, who have chosen to uh, live a world of of selflessness rather than selfishness and who truly care about helping other people people reach their goals and live an inspiring life. I'm, I'm grateful that for people like you who are cheerleaders, who clap for people and say, you can do it because the Lord knows that there's many, many whispers out there that tell us that we can't. And how do we find you online? SeanAnderson.com. S-H-A-W-N-A-N-D-E-R-S-O-N. SeanAnderson.com. Perfect. We'll have the link up in the show notes so that people can read the show notes and learn how to go that extra mile each and every day. So thank you once again for coming on our show, talking to us about the power of going that extra mile and taking us one step closer to a human revolution. Mr. AJ, you are an inspiring host. You are listening to My 7 Chakras. Go to my S-E-V-E-N chakras.com. Download your free gift, get inspired and take action. Transform your life today.